What's up, all my Power Rise crew? Today we're looking at double flaring brake lines. Here's see right there. Ain't that just awesome? So much stronger. Single flare, double flare, and the one I did in the video. So always use double flare. Don't use single flare. And let's just quit gabbing. Let's get on with the video. I'll show you how it's done. Cool. Roll. Now before we get into flaring the tubing, let's talk about cutting. These two are here, obviously, same, kind of same style cutter. One's just a little bigger than the other. This right here stops at 7 eighths. This one goes up to about an inch and an eighth. So they both do the same thing. They both work the same way. You take it, unscrew that, put it on the tubing right there, tighten it up, give it a spin, and cut it. So the purpose of this style right here, of course, is adjustable. You can go to different size lines. You can do your uh, fuel line all the way down to your brake line with this. So we'll do a little demo on it real quick. Uh, hanging it up down here. Kind of put it in line. Come on. Here we go. Just give it a little snug. Don't crank it down tight. It's a, just a good snug. Turn it a few times. You feel it. Okay, it's a little bit looser now. Give it another little snug. Turn it. Give another little snug. It's loose again. Give another little snug. It's loose again. Well, the reason it keeps going loose because that cutter is actually cut down inside the tubing right there. See that wheel right there? It cuts down inside the tubing. And once it cuts to death, it loosens up a little bit. Then you gotta snug it up again. Snug it a little more. I think what for a new one, this darn blade doesn't do a whole lot. I begin to think the there it goes. I was wondering if it's gonna close down tight enough, but yeah it does. Anyway, there we go. All nice neat cut. You can see I've already cut it once because I had this is an old piece of brake line that came off of uh, the rear diff off a of rust bucket, I think. And I just took a pair of diagonal cutters and cut it. So before I started shooting the video, I cleaned up the cut to make it look pretty. Now, this one. This one right here, I like it because it's pretty quick and easy. It's specifically for 316's brake line. You will not use this on your fuel line because it's, it could be quarter inch, it could be three eighths, or it could be bigger for whatever size fuel line you may be running. This is specifically for 316's brake line. So what you would do with that, see the little groove right there? You get inside here, you'll snap it in there. You'll feel it go pop. There it is. Oh, come on, get in there. And you start turning it like this. That easy. What's up, bud? These are so much quicker, especially when you start getting into really tight areas. Because once you get that locked in, you just kind of ratchet it back and forth like a, you know, socket and ratchet, something like that. It's easy in tight places. So I like those much better than do these. But these are more universal for bigger fuel lines. So take your pick. But you can buy these for other size lines as well. Now I went ahead and cut this uh, fitting off right here so I can show you that double flare right there. We're going to be doing a single flare and a double flare. And the only reason I'm doing a single flare is to show you why not to do a single flare. Single flare has its uh, purposes, I guess. Uh, I really prefer I never use them, honestly. But for brake line, you 100% do not want to use single flare. You always want to double flare it. But you see the double wall right here to where they take the metal it folds over on top of itself and then it pushes it, the other die pushes it down inside there and creates that double thickness. So, got my piece of brake line here. Let's do a single flare first. Now here's a tool just about everybody uses. You can go to most your auto parts store, Harbor Freight, whatever, you can buy this tool right here. And to be 100% transparent, actually over yonder is the dies to do the double flare. 
but most people end up saying, well, it's okay to do this right here, just put more flour in it, and you're good. <laughs> no, it ain't. So, let's take our little fitting right here, and we'll slide it over here, because you always want to put that on first. Yeah, because I've done it before. You know, you put, I flared that thing out there. It's like, oh, that's a beautiful flare. And I got to put it on. I'm like, ah, oh, crap. I forgot to put that on. So it's a bad thing. So we're going to take this right here next. And we're going to do the 316s right here. We'll open this right here. Spread that open. Lock on that 316s. So what you want is the surface of the here sitting above it probably about an eighth of an inch or so. Then you bring this back over here, open it up, and cramp it down good tight so it grabs a good bite hold of that. Then you're going to take this, run this back, then once you get that right there run back, you take it, you go in like this, rotate it like this, come over top of it, and the point here will go right inside the tubing there. Come on, dang it. There we go. And just slowly crank it on down. And you'll see that brake line start to spread right there. Now your low pressure fuel line, and I say low pressure like for carbureted fuel lines, I'm going to loosely say this, that that would be the one place you could probably do it, but I would honestly, I wouldn't. Because double flare is always better than single, hands down, always. Okay, it's right there. I bottomed it out. Back this up. Come out here, rotate it out. Get off there. You see where I kind of flared it like that? Loosen this. Fold it over, pull that out. Now after we get out of the clamp, let's take a little eyeball on it here. Let's check it out. If you look real close, you can see the abrasion that the die put onto it. So point there as it pressed and shaped it. Now one of my biggest issues with doing a single flare is the fact that in order to single to do that, to do a single flare, you've got to stretch that metal. Anytime you stretch metal, what just happens? It gets thinner. So when you got your brake pressure, especially on your big one-ton trucks, it's got the big super heavy-duty brake system that's running up into the thousands of pounds of uh, brake pressure, you want no defects in your brake lines, none. Single flare, oftentimes because it stretches that mu so much to make it fit, that sometimes you look on the back side, I don't, this right here done okay. I still wouldn't use it for brake line, but nonetheless. They'll crack on the back side. So it stretches the metal, it's thin, and sometimes you get a little potential for cracks back there. So that is a no no. I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't even use this for fuel line. So I'm gonna cut this one off and we're gonna do a double flare. Snap that in there. Here, snap. Look at that, so quick. I love this thing right here. And I dropped it. So now we're gonna set up for double flare and well, yeah, be sure to put that on, which I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now, this is a good flare tool for double flares. Awesome, awesome tool. But in order for me to do that, I have to take this, slide back a little further. And you notice, this, like I said, this is an old brake line, so I had to straighten this tubing out to get this to slide back further enough for me to get this tool on right here. So, what we do first, take these, back them up a little bit, because you want your blocks to move. Now, take your positioning bolt, screw it in, finger tight, done, right there. Do, no wrenches, no nothing. And what you got, if you look inside there, See, I'll take back the positioning bolt up. See, now we got a round hole. And now it stops. So what we're gonna do at this point, we'll take the brake line and the fitting will fall off. Be sure to put it on the right way. Okay, we're back. I had to wait till all the loud cars and motorcycles went by. 
then we open this up a little bit slide this in here and what will happen watch the positioning bolt inside there boom you see it pop in there it hits the end of the positioning bolt that is where it stops the line positions it where it needs to be again watch real close to that hole we we'll back it up and see right there let's see whoop right there tighten this up tighten this up just kind of got the line snugged a little bit and also you really should use a real wrench so you don't booger up your tool but i was too lazy to, get to actually search for it and i got a crash wrench was the first thing i seen so there you go or just a wrench whatever And you want to tighten it down enough that it's clamping down on this right here, but you don't have to get stupid tight with it. Otherwise, I'd actually got a real wrench and do it right if I had to get really tight. But good, hard, snug. Good, snug. Now we take our positioning bolt and back it out. And put that back in my little pack over here so I don't lose it. And you can see the end of the brake line through the hole right there. Cool, cool. Now we use this. So your kit comes with some lubricant right here. So you take the lubricant and start with OP1 right here. Start with that right there first. This is OP2 end. This is OP, uh, OP1 end. So you take put a little bit on there. Screw it in through there and like that right there. And then boom, it's contacted the line. So now you want to tighten it up until the hex is sitting against the body of the flare tool. And nothing too by using this type of tool instead of that one I showed you guys a moment ago. These are a lot easier to work with in tight areas. And sometimes when you're doing brake line underneath your rigs, room is like <laughs> a rare commodity. And what you want to do before you get too crazy is look over here. If you see little abrasion marks, that means your brake line slid out on you. But right now I've got no abrasion marks right here, so the brake line's locked in good. So it's never on up. Right there. See? Yep. So the hex body here is now against the block here. And yep, we're good. So now that's done its job. Take this, back it out. I gotta go off camera for a minute because get that oh, there it goes. Get that leverage to break it loose. Back it out. That end has done its job. Now we gotta do this end. Put a little bit of lube on that end. You don't need a lot. I mean I literally just kind of touched it into it. That's all I did. Screw that in there. And you see it's sitting out from the block right there. Snug it up until the hex is touching the block. Right there, it just contacted the block. So now, break it loose again, take it out. Okay, go off camera for a moment. Apparently I didn't eat my spinach this morning because I had to put a little oomph to it to break it loose. So they all oh, look yonder, look down inside there. Woohoo, pretty. So now we gotta take the two locking bolts out. Or at least just uh enough to pull the die part. So yeah, you probably wouldn't take them out. Back them out. Let's see if we can get enough to pull it out. Yep, yeah, gotta go a little further. And 
that clamp box guy. There we go. And let me wipe this off, get the grease off so you get a better view of it. And that you see there is a beautiful double flare. So now you get that double thickness whenever you crank it down on it right there. It's going to give a good bite to your fitting on your brake lines or your uh, calipers, whatever the case may be. Much more safe. No line splitting, all that good stuff. So double flare your brake lines. Always, always, always. Heck, double flare your fuel lines. You want no weak spots anywhere, okay? Let's look at the single flare versus double flare in this little illustration right here. So check it out. See the single flare? See the single wall thickness. And as I pointed out earlier, right there, that when you do that single flare right there, you're only you're stretching this out to a 45 degree angle, whatever its angle may be, and you subject to get stress fractures and things like that, which will cause possible brake failure. If nothing else, definitely a brake leak. So you don't want to go this route because again, looking at the illustration, you can see it's a single flare, single wall thickness. Now check out the double inverted flare, the double flare as they call it, just simply called. You can see again double flare because you got double the wall thickness. As you see here, that double wall thickness right there, that's going to give you a much much stronger connection to your. You know your brake calipers to your wheel cylinders your brake lines your you know, connection to your soft lines and stuff it's going to give you a much more solid connection and solid connections means safety so now what i did since i'm done with the tool i put everything back in this container because those little small parts like that yeah i'm not the most uh, organized person in the world so therefore yeah, who knows where they'd end up at so before my adhd brain goes squirrel put everything back in there and just even just in case you know my dad or my buddy Wayne wants to borrow me something I need something like that, which you know I do most of my dad's work for him now anymore. I put the directions and all that stuff in there too. And there we go. Now I'll put it back in my toolbox. It'll be there for the next time. Now let's look double flare versus single flare. See how much more meat difference right here? The thickness of the metal, this is going to be a much stronger connection to your calipers or whatever you know, brake device you're hooking to. Master cylinder, you know, your soft lines, hard lines, whatever. This is going to be a much stronger connection than this right here. And as I mentioned earlier, earlier because of that uh, single flare on this, it stretches that metal so much, you subject to get little micro tears in there. And I have actually seen tear enough that it causes uh, brake fluid leaks. Single flare, no, no. Double flare, always. Sweet. See that? Much better. Now, let's take another look one more time. This here is the factory end that came on this brake line, okay? And as you can see, then here's the single flare. The two double flare ones, definitely, definitely tons stronger. And honestly, the one we created, looks like we got a bit more uh, thickness going on with it over the aftermarket one, the factory aftermarket. And then, of course, we got the single flare. You can see the difference in them right there. Huge, huge difference. Always double flare. So these tools right here, I'll put a link down below so you guys can pick you up a set. Have these on hand. Uh, this right here is totally optional to you, but as you can see, getting into tight spots where you just kind of hook, hook your line there and just kind of do it like a ratchet. So much easier in those little tight areas when you're working underneath your rig and you know, running all your new brake line, going to your rear axles and wherever, you know. Uh, again, this is the 3 16ths for brake line. Uh, if you need something bigger, 3 8 or quarter inch or whatever the case may be, you just have to find the appropriate size. 316s is your most common size for brake line. That's the link I'll provide. Cool, cool. Now, if you want to use this style right here, nothing wrong with that as well. I will put a link down below for those. Uh, these work just fine. I've used these, actually, that's one of my old ones. I've used that thing for years, and it's holding up good. It's like I need to tighten the screw up. There you go. So, these have always done a great job. They're 
kind of universal, I guess you might say. They'll go from small brake line, 3 16 all the way up to, you know, half inch line, whatever. This one here goes all up to 7 8 Yeah, that's what I said earlier. And this one here goes to about like an inch and an eighth or something like that. So these work as well. Nothing wrong with them. Uh, but for tight spots, doing your brake lines around the rear discs or whatever, these are invaluable. They're awesome. And not too crazy expensive. Double flare tool. This is the only way you're going to do it right. This kit I had over here, let me go grab it real quick. Right there is the uh, cheap Harbor Freight brand. Of course, it has the clamp here. I showed you guys how to do a single flare. And that locks in there, does this thing. Actually, goes on this side, but you know, neither here or there. Goes on this side, and once you do that, then you get the appropriate die 3 16 right here that die right there goes inside the brake line like so and forms it so the problem with this kit right here it will make your brake lines deformed if you the grass is right color green the plants align correctly and you hold your mouth right you'll get a straight crimp okay not the most reliable kit at all But this one nails it every time. Love this kit right here. So again, I'll drop a link down below. You guys can pick up your set and it'll work out great for you. So everyone, if you enjoyed that video, hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, leave some cool comments down below, and I really appreciate you hanging out. Peace. Later y'all.